Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you an Iceland volcanic and seismic update. Friday, May 20th, around 8.30 p.m. Mountain Time 2022. The seismic swarm and seismicity in Iceland overall has been increasing over the last week with micro tremor packages lasting for three to six hours. And the position of these quakes shifting from one location to another and back and forth and back and forth. But it's become clear that the major activity is on the Reykjanes Peninsula. And in fact, in the last day or so, that would be the red region, you can see a clear linear pattern to the quakes. And this is in line with the fissure-type eruptions that happen on the Reykjanes Peninsula. Now, there hasn't been an eruption on the peninsula since the 12th century, and we'll get to that later in this podcast. But the Reykjanes Peninsula itself has intense seismic activity over the last several days, and uplift, which is reaching 2.5 centimeters. And according to IcelandGeology.net in its most recent update, there's new activity off the tip of the peninsula still considered the Reykjanes volcano. Now, the earthquake activity off the coast of Reykjanesta is part of the Reykjanes volcano, and it increased again after a few days of little earthquake activity. This area was active last week, and it quieted off. Then this area became active this week and quieted off, and now this area is becoming more active. So we kind of have a ping pong event here. Now, the largest earthquake so far had a magnitude of 3.8, and the second largest earthquake had a magnitude of 3.5. The M3.8 was felt in Grindavik and on nearby towns near the Reykjanes Peninsula. So that's the latest update there. And here we have the live earthquake data coming from the peninsula itself. And you can see here in the last 12 hours, quite a significant amount of activity coming in pulses that last for about three or four hours. Now, if we just go to the peninsula itself instead of the ridge, you can see it cuts off that activity that's offshore. But yet you can, we can still see a clustering here near Grindavik. Now, let's talk a little bit about the Reykjanes volcano itself and some general information. And you can see here the peninsula, those two turn-ins there. That's what we're looking at here. So we're literally looking straight up the peninsula. And you can even see the mid-ocean ridge fissure system that moves right through there. The reason this exists is because of lava. Lava has created this peninsula because it is forming on the mid-ocean ridge and the rift zone. So the Reykjanes volcano is are these rifts here. Now, the Reykjanes volcanic system at the southwest tip of the Reykjanes Peninsula, where the mid-Atlantic ridge rises above sea level, comprises a broad area of post-glacial basaltic crater rows and small shield volcanoes. The submarine Reykjanes Shigir volcano system is continuous with and is considered part of the Reykjanes volcano system, which is the westernmost of a series of close closely spaced and echelon fissures, which means kind of in an array, sub-parallel, that extend diagonally across the Reykjanes Peninsula. So the last eruption, sub-aerial eruptions have occurred in historical time during the 13th century and several locations in the northeast-southwest trending fissure system, and numerous submarine eruptions dating back to the 12th century have been observed during historic times. So that's what we're looking forward to here, either some submarine eruptions or any one of these fissures lighting up with another volcanic event, a fissure eruption, similar to the one that happened last year. Now, you wouldn't know looking at these thousands of earthquakes in the last week that anything was happening if you were using USGS. In fact, this is their data set for Iceland seismicity, Magnitude 2.5 or greater for the next the last seven days. 2.5 or greater, we can just count one, two, three, four, five, six, dozens of them in the last seven days on the official Icelandic chart. So why the USGS is obfuscating the truth or just doesn't care is anyone's guess. But the fact is that the uplift is real and it is increasing this week. So there is a major area of uplift amazingly enough, right here where there seems to be a large cinder cone type volcano vent from a previous eruption. Now, this area hasn't erupted since the 1300s, and we'll get to that data in just a moment. 
So here we are over at the current warning uh, level, and its current status is at re re restless, just two out of five. I think that's been increased to three, and this is incorrect. It's now, well, aviation color code is at yellow. Let's just put it that way. But the Rakianis volcano on the peninsula of the same name is a vast fissure system in southwest Iceland. It's located where the Mid-Atlantic Ridge emerges onto land, which basically comes right through here. And it forms a vast area with many eruptive fissures, lava fields, hot springs, and even mud pools. And the area of uplift here is of great concern on where it may erupt because this is where there's a large geothermal plant, a power plant, that could literally, well, destroy the electricity for the region. Now, Reykjanes Peninsula, again, some more historic context here. The last volcanic eruption on the peninsula near the Icelandic capital of Reykjavik took place in the 12th century. So, we have that context. And then this eruption occurred, which is not the Reykjana system. It's Fagradalsfall. It's further inland here. But this is the area of the Reykjana's volcanic system. Fagradalsfall is included in it, but not connected to it, if, if I could put it that way. And let's just go over the eruptive history of the Reykjana's peninsula where all this seismicity is happening. There was actually an unknown eruption, possibly in the 70s, and in the 60s, but the last confirmed eruption was VEI-3 in 1830. And prior to that, a VEI-3 in 1783. And prior to that, a VEI-2 in 1583. And prior to that, small activity going back to 1231. But from 1197 to 1231, specifically 1210 to 1240, that is a just a 30-year period. We had one, two, three VEI-3s and a VEI-4 in a 30-year period. And that could be historically what we would be looking for moving forward. If this region begins erupting, it's going to threaten all of Reykjavik, which is the capital and where most people live. Do we have a good map? No, I don't have a good map. There it is. So Reykjavik is... Let's just bring this down up in this region. And this is where all the people live. Now, luckily, when Fagradosfall out here was erupting, this the most of the weather moved to the west and didn't affect Reykjavik. But when the Reykjanes volcano erupts, it goes directly into the town. So a 30-year type eruption scenario with multiple VEI-3s could literally choke out the entire city where most of the people on this island live. And we can just bring you down to scale. We don't need that. And you can see how significant something here, continuously erupting for decades, would be for people living here. That's a whole lot to worry about. And there's a whole lot of historical documentation that when the Reykjanes gets going, well, it keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. And that's a boom to knowledge. Proper prior planning prevents piss poor performance when Iceland is preparing to erupt once again, as it always does eventually. But in this case, with the high resolution geologic data that we have, there's a lot of warning. And we were able to give up to six weeks of warning for the last eruption. This one is not imminent, but it's slowly building. Magma is intruding, and there could be a new dike forming, which would mean a whole new eruption. This one on the Reykjanes volcano. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Share this with like-minded people and be safe. We love you. And that's a boom to knowledge.